If black America were a country, it would have a larger HIV positive population than seven countries receiving emergency U.S. aid for this worldwide epidemic. Blacks represent one in eight Americans, yet they account for one out of two people living with HIV AIDS. In spite of improvements in treatment and awareness, the National Minority AIDS Council's report says that AIDS remains the leading cause of death among black women 25 to 34, and the second leading cause of death in black men between 35 and 44. Helping us make sense of these staggering statistics are C. Virginia Fields, president and CEO of the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS. Dr. Robert Fullilove, associate dean for community and minority affairs and professor of clinical sociomedical sciences at Columbia University. Dr. Fullilove wrote a report, African Americans, Health Disparities and HIV AIDS for the National Minority AIDS Council. And finally, Marvelyn Brown, the 24-year-old author living with HIV. Her memoir, The Naked Truth, documents how she contracted the disease when she was 19 years old. She has dedicated her life to bringing awareness to this epidemic. I welcome you all. Thank you very much. Let me start with you. Talk to me about the day you learned you contracted this disease. Well, the day I found out that I was HIV positive, I had been in the hospital for two and a half weeks, in and out of ICU. Um, my funeral was planned. Um, and the doctors had basically told me it was because of pneumonia. So at this time, I was stabilized and my family went back to work. There was a knock at the door. And I told the doctor he could come in and he said, I have something more serious to tell you. Me being 19 years old, I said, am I pregnant? And he said, no, you're not pregnant, you're HIV positive. And at that time, it was, I had heard about HIV. I just didn't care about it or didn't think that it could happen to me. So when he told me, I was just shocked. Doctor, what is it going to take? Quite frankly, we've been on for three seasons. We do one of these shows every season. I have been doing this now for almost two decades, ringing the bell of awareness. It does not seem to be getting better. Why? Yeah, I, I would like to have our viewers pay particular attention to the issue of stigma. One of the things that we've been pushing since we identified HIV as the cause of AIDS is that people know their status, which means that they have to get tested. We're taping this in New York City, but the truth of the matter is that outside of the city, having a conversation with anybody about HIV AIDS raises the possibility that people will question your sexuality, that they'll wonder about other behaviors that you might have engaged in. And the fear of being thought of as somebody who's not like everyone else and keeps a lot of people from getting tested, even if they suspect that they may have done something that might have exposed them to this virus. I think that the fact that we have not been able to have a conversation in our community about what's going on with this virus is one of the things that keeps us from being better informed and keeps us from taking steps to protect ourselves, like, for example, getting tested. Yet, uh, see, Virginia Fields, one of the issues that we're finding, it is not uh, just a rural problem. You can be in a crowded city like New York City where people won't know where the heck you're going, and you still have this issue. Uh, we should note that you were borough president in Manhattan for many, many years and talk to people regularly uh, about many, many facets of their lives. What did you find most surprising when you took this position in terms of how people viewed this? There's a sense of complacency. People believe that their that HIV or AIDS is cured, and that as a result they don't have to worry about it because if they become infected, they can just take some medicine and it will be okay. Partly because of how they see Magic Johnson, but what they don't know is the impact that the drugs have on one's body. I'm sure over a period of time, and the fact that he has the money in order to afford the drug. So it's a sense of complacency. It's needing to deal with the stigma that Dr. Fuller Love talked about, the discrimination. But I think we also need to look at the schools. We must look at comprehensive health uh, curriculums in our schools. The reality is 13 year olds, 11 and 10 year olds are having sex. We are seeing the increase in terms of numbers of sexually transmitted diseases among this young population. So every curriculum, because it has been shown that when young people receive this information from schools, they are much more particular and careful about sexual, risky sexual behavior. Often I think the misguided conversation is we keep talking about young people, young people, young people as if they're the only ones who are falling into this trap. This really crosses generations uh, of people in terms of the activity 
and and the ignorance of it. Right? Yeah, let's welcome in the Viagra generation. We're seeing <laughs> rising rates amongst senior citizens because men who thought they were through are back in the game. <laughs> and because they're back in the game, we're seeing increased rates, not simply of HIV, but chlamydia, gonorrhea, and other sexually transmitted infections. No. Um, you're absolutely correct to note that this is an aging epidemic, so a lot of people are aging into it. Uh, it started in 1981. Well, if you were 30 in 1981, you can do the math and see that uh, folks who are still active still have the possibility of being exposed to the virus, and they still have the possibility of passing it on. Marvelin, let me ask you, when you talk to young black women especially, uh, because this is disproportionately hitting them in a way that uh, I, I think is so devastating that uh, Joe most. Uh, are they listening? Uh, yes. Well, I know with writing my autobiography, The Naked Truth, I've received countless emails from young people and young women who are just thanking me for letting them know how easy it is to catch HIV. There's no risky behavior into it because I just had sex with someone I loved and I trusted. And it just took one time. And soon people start to realize that HIV can happen to you. I mean, I did something just as easy as what your mother did to get you here. Then people start to realize, and it also helps with stigma, and they also begin to see that this could happen to me. Well, I thank you all. Hopefully, hopefully soon, we won't have to keep doing these kind of shows on an annual basis. And uh, uh, But we thank those of you on the front line, and thank you for your bravery in terms of getting out there and telling your personal story. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks.